In this video we learn how the internal energy changes with temperature. Alright, so the internal energy is the thermodynamic variable that is going to allow us to do the bookkeeping of energy. For example, if we want to know how much energy can be released in a chemical reaction, uh, we could actually calculate the change in internal energy from reagents to products, and the change in internal energy will be a very good measure for how much energy can be made available uh, for that reaction. All right, so then it's quite useful to understand how the internal energy changes with temperature. So the question that we're asking is, well, suppose that you have some energy stored in a system, like a chemical reaction, or perhaps is, is uh, some substance. If you were to elevate the temperature of that substance or, or that chemical reaction, how much more energy or less energy would you, would you get out of a process that involves that system? That's kind of the, the, the key question here. Okay, so we're, we're looking for a relationship between the internal energy and uh, temperature. Okay, so let's see uh, how that works out. All right, so uh, we actually have a couple of ways to go about this. Uh, first, uh, we can actually use this expression for the change in internal energy, which comes from the first law, and we said that, well, uh, the change in internal energy for any process is just the heat evolved if the process were to take place at constant volume. Now, in differential form, that expression takes uh, this form. Differential of U is differential of Q sub V. Okay, uh, so here we have uh, the, the differential of heat. And uh, we actually know how the heat uh, changes with temperature. We actually have it right here. Notice that that is how the heat changes upon changing the temperature, heating, or cooling. Right, so we can copy that expression right here in differential form as well differential of Q, which we can actually uh, put here as a uh, path-dependent variable, and then uh, C differential of T. Okay, so those are the two expressions. Now notice that what we have right there is almost what we have right here, but after specifying a constant volume path. So we can do that, right? So we can say, uh, now I want to do this at constant volume. That means that the path is specified, so that it's a normal differential, and now my heat capacity is the heat capacity at constant volume. Okay, so uh, after that, then what we say is, well, differential of U, the way that the internal energy changes with temperature is simply CV differential of T. Okay, that gives you uh, the way to connect the internal energy with changes in temperature. Okay, notice that heat capacities are positive. So what this is telling you right away is that if you increase the temperature, if you make this positive, then because the heat capacity is, co is positive, then the internal energy should go up, right? So hotter objects, hotter systems have more energy, and that makes perfect sense. All right, now a way to visualize this is to recognize that you can re rearrange that expression as this, and this is C sub V. And here you have the ratio of two differentials uh, uh, which means that if you were to plot the internal energy as a function of temperature, uh, this is going to have uh, some form, right? Notice that uh, the, uh, uh, this heat capacity that you have right here would be the first derivative of the internal energy with respect to uh, a temperature. Okay, so graphically that means that what you actually have right there would be, uh, this should touch, okay, the slope of this line at that point is equal to the first derivative of the internal energy with respect to temperature, mm -hmm. so that happens to be exactly what the heat capacity at the constant volume is, right? So if you're asked the question, well, what is the dependence of the internal energy on temperature? You said, well, that dependence is given by the heat capacity at the constant volume. As a matter of fact, the slope at any point in the internal energy versus temperature curve, right, the slope of the line tangent to it, that is directly the heat capacity at constant volume. That is, uh, that is useful. Okay, great, so how is this going to appear in problems? Well, in problems, you're going to have to calculate explicitly how many more joules you have in a substance when you elevate the temperature of the substance by some degrees. Okay, so what you ac actually end up doing is integrating these expressions to find an explicit dependence of the internal energy on temperature. 
So let's try to do how, let's try to see how the integration takes place. Right, so what you would like to do is just integrate this, which is going to be very straightforward. Okay, and that integral is simply differential of u on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you have to integrate this from uh, the change in temperature, the initial temperature, to the final temperature. And here you're going to have two choices. Right? So if the heat capacity at constant volume is constant with temperature, that means that it doesn't change with temperature, then uh, uh, this should actually work. But uh, uh, actually, this is constant. That means that you can factor it out of the integral, and then uh, you will have simply to solve this. But in some problems, this actually won't be the case. In some problems, it's going to happen that the heat capacity depends on temperature. So then you'll have to solve that integral uh, explicitly. OK, but if that's not the case, and that it will be the case in, in many cases, right? So uh, this is going to be a constant number. Then uh, that integral of differential of, of differential of t is simply delta t, right? So here you have your very simple expression to understand the change, the dependence of the internal energy, uh, uh, or how the internal energy changes with temperature. To illustrate this equation, we're just going to uh, do a numerical example again, just to show you how simple this is. And the numerical example is going to involve an ideal gas we have in some sort of container, right? So uh, here's your ideal gas, and we're going to have two moles of it. And the initial temperature is 298 Kelvin. We don't need to know what the volume is. We don't need to know what the pressure is. We just the initial temperature. And what we're going to do is just simply calculate uh, what would be the change in internal energy when uh, you elevate the temperature to 310 Kelvin. Okay, so this will be a process very analogous to what we're doing right now. Every one of you is breathing air in, which can be uh, associated as an ideal gas or behaves as an ideal gas, and that air is initially at 298 Kelvin, which is room temperature. But as it gets in contact with your body, it actually heats up to physiological temperature, which is 310 Kelvin. As a consequence of that heating up, that ideal gas is gaining some energy. So in this problem, we're going to calculate explicitly how much energy do you gain from that heating. All right, so the only uh, other piece of information that we need is what is the heat capacity of this ideal gas. And that C sub B, uh, which in this case is going to be molar, then it's going to be 3 halves R, where R is just the gas constant. Okay, so it's a way to give you that number, but as a function of uh, that 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. All right, so we take that expression and we say, look, this is just the total heat capacity. But what we have in the problem is some more heat capacity. Right, so the way to connect both is simply to say, well, this is exactly the same as that. The more heat capacity multiplied by the number of moles is the total heat capacity, and then delta T. Okay, so from that expression, we actually have everything that we need to solve. All right, so your delta U is going to be equal to 2 mole times 3 halves uh, R, 8.31, 4 joules per mole Kelvin. And then the difference in temperature, which is 310 Kelvin, minus... 298 Kelvin. Okay, so um, you just have to punch in these numbers and let's try to figure out what the units of the solution would be. Notice that this per mole here cancels with that per mole, then uh, your Kelvin is going to cancel with that Kelvin, and then uh, the result of the solution is going to be uh, joules. Okay, you can solve this, this in, your, uh, in your calculator and contrast your answer with what you have in the textbook, this problem is solved there. Informally, this should be a positive number because what that tells you, what we're doing here is elevate the temperature. And if you elevate the temperature, then the internal energy should increase. Okay, great. So uh, in this video, we have seen how the internal energy depends on temperature. In the next video, we're going to uh, take a step forward and then define uh, what enthalpy is.